Welcome to the New South Wales Government Procure IT version 3.2 webinar. This webinar explores the fundamental key elements brought by Procure IT version 3.2. Now, before we start, it is important to highlight that this is an online webinar produced by the ICT Commercial Strategy Team with specific learning objectives. The content of this webinar is not intended to be comprehensive, nor does it constitute legal advice. By the end of this session, you will be able to understand the key changes brought by Procure IT version 3.2, prepare for any transitional arrangements, and locate relevant legislation, regulation, policy and guidelines relevant to Procure IT version 3.2. This webinar assumes that participants are already familiar with the basic Procure IT framework principles. These principles will not be covered in today's session. The Procure IT framework is mandatory for the purchase by New South Wales government buyers of ICT related products and services. It encompasses template terms and conditions for New South Wales government ICT procurement. Procure IT version 3.2 is the latest version of Procure IT framework documents and replaces Procure IT version 3.1. Procure IT version 3.2 went live on the 1st of July 2017 and became mandatory from the 1st of September of that same year. From the 1st of September 2017, Procure IT version 3.2 applies to all new ICT procurement above $150,000 over the life of the contract and all high-risk ICT procurement. The current short-form contract continues to apply to ICT procurement contracts below $150,000 that are not high-risk. All the documentation to procure IT version 3.2 is available at our ProcurePoint website, that is www.procurepoint.newsaswells.gov.au. On the 1st of July 2017, the Vita Procure IT version 3.2 website went live. On this website, all contracts and modules are presented as a dynamic, interactive website. The website is aimed at significantly enhancing the, the user experience in working with Procure IT version 3.2. A key benefit is that it now places Procure IT into a digital space. Before we start discussing the key changes brought by Procure IT version 3.2, I want to point out that this release of version 3.2 is not the end of the work the New South Wales government is doing on ICT procurement reform. Procure IT version 3.2 is an interim step. It is not intended as an overhaul or comprehensive review of the whole Procure IT framework. Issues raised by industry and agency remain under consideration for future Procure IT framework review. So why the changes? Procure IT version 3.1 was used for ICT procurement since June 2013. So it needed revision to address various issues that had arisen since its release. In addition, the revision needed to align Procure IT with applicable legislation. For instance, the Privacy and Personal Information Protection Act 1998 News as Wells, the Health Records and Information Privacy Information Act 2002 News as Wells, the Privacy Act 1988 Commonwealth, and the Government Information Public Access Act 
2009 New South Wales. Also, Procure IT version 3.2 was introduced to assist government agencies to comply with relevant government policies. For example, the New South Wales Government Cloud Policy and the New South Wales Government Digital Information Security Policy. Additionally, the changes address issues raised in consultation with New South Wales government agencies and suppliers on Procure IT version 3.1. In general terms, what has changed in Procure IT? The head agreement, customer contract, dictionary, and schedules all include revised provisions. In addition, the Procure IT version 3.1 modules have been revised to address minor drafting issues and to rebatch Procure IT version 3.0 modules 13 and 13A, but these otherwise remain unchanged. So the key changes to the head agreement and customer contract include revised provisions concerning customer data, security and privacy, as well as intellectual property rights, systems, liability, though only limited changes, audit, escrow to introduce some flexibility, termination for convenience, and GIPA and government information sharing. It is important to note that there has been no change from Procure IT version 3.1 order of priority. The customer contract applies to every module used in a variety of ICT contexts. Modules and module order forms prevail over the customer contract where inconsistent. What have been the changes in relation to customer data? There is a new customer data definition in the dictionary, which is broader than the definition in module 10. Now, in relation to ownership and rights to customer data, there is now a clear statement that the contractor doesn't own, have any interest or rights in customer data wherever it is located other than as set out in the customer contract and modules. There are controls on retention of customer data by the contractor. At expiry of the agreed retention period, the contractor must destroy the customer data or return to the customer at the customer selection. If the contractor needs to retain any part of the data included in the customer data definition, they need to call this out in the order form. The customer's prior written consent is required for transfer of customer data outside New South Wales or transfer of possession of customer data. Customer data is a state record under the legislation. A state record is any record made, received and or kept in exercising functions of public office for any purpose or use of public office. Public office is broadly defined in the State Records Act, and it includes a New South Wales Government Department, Office, Commission, Board, Agency, Service, or Instrumentality, exercising an any New South Wales Government function. It includes a body established for a public purpose, corporate or not, local council, and state-owned corporations. It is important to mention that specified offshore jurisdictions and conditions of consent can be agreed upfront in the general order form. The contract, the contractor must comply with any conditions on consent. 
Now, why have these changes in relation to customer data have been made? New South Wales government agencies need greater control over their customer data to meet their obligations under the State Records Act to ensure the safe custody and proper preservation of state records. Therefore, the New South Wales government needed clearer provisions concerning responsibility for customer data. Offshoring is permitted, provided an appropriate risk assessment is made, and records are managed in accordance with state records legislation. Now, in relation to security, the key changes include the contractor must establish, maintain, enforce, and continuously improve safety and security procedures and safeguards against unauthorized access, use, destruction, loss or alteration of customer data and customers' other confidential information. The contractor must also notify the customer of the contractor's current safety and security procedures and any changes and comply with secrecy and security requirements stated in the general order form or notified by the customer. Now, what about reporting security breaches? If the contractor becomes aware of an actual alleged or suspected breach of these secrecy and security requirements, it must immediately notify the customer, investigate the security issue within 48 hours, and report to the customer, and remedy any actual secrecy or security breach within 24 hours from conclusion of the investigation. There is flexibility for the customer CIO to approve alternative arrangements and for these to be agreed upfront in the general order form. Now, these changes were made because there was a strong need for default standard security requirements. Now, with regards to privacy, privacy laws is expanded in the dictionary to ensure compliance with the Privacy and Personal Information Protection Act 1998, the Health Records and Information Privacy Act 2002, the Privacy Act 1988, and any other applicable legislation affecting privacy or personal information, ancillary rules, guidelines, orders, directions, directives, codes of conduct, or other instruments made or issued under that legislation. There are now some enhanced obligations as well. The contractor must, when it collects, uses, discloses, or holds personal information in the course of performing its contractual obligations, do so only for the purposes of performing the contract, comply with all applicable privacy laws as if it were a person subject to the privacy laws, not do anything that would breach the privacy laws or which, if done by the customer, would breach the privacy laws, not disclose personal information to any other person without the customer's consent or as expressly required by the statutory requirements, notify the customer immediately on becoming aware of a breach or a possible breach of any of these obligations. Comply with the customer's reasonable directions regarding care and protection of personal information. Take all technical, organizational, and other security measures reasonably within the contractor's power to protect personal information from misuse, interference, loss, unauthorized access, use, modification, or disclosure. And not allow, permit access to, or transfer personal information outside Australia without the customer's prior written approval or as specified in the general order form. Now, the changes were made to enable New South Wales government agencies 
to better comply with New South Wales privacy laws in the context of cross-border data flows. The New South Wales government needed to take reasonable steps to ensure personal information will not be held, used or disclosed inconsistently with information privacy principles or health privacy principles. The changes also cover the range of privacy legislation that may already be applicable to the customer and contractor in performing the Procure IT contract. With regards to intellectual property, there have been some revisions to the customer contract. With regards to the customer's right to sublicense contractor own new material, this has been amended to reflect legislative changes concerning the New South Wales government agencies regulated under the, the Government Sector Employment Act 2013, that's the GSE Act, and statutory bodies representing the Crown with Crown status under Section 13A of the Interpretation Act 1987. There are now clearer license provisions for existing materials. License to use existing material incorporated in a deliverable are perpetual and irrevocable to the extent required for the customer to receive the benefit of deliverables in accordance with the customer contract. There is also flexibility to agree otherwise in the general order form, for instance, where the license is for a fixed term. Now, these changes clarify the customer's rights to use deliverables. Also, the rights to use existing material included in a deliverable should align with perpetual irrevocable rights to use new material in that deliverable unless it's not possible to secure these rights. For customer own new material, the customer is to retain discretion as to whether to grant the contractor a license to use the customer own new material and the terms of such license. License of customer own new material to the contractor can be agreed in the general order form. These changes are based on customer feedback regarding the need to retain the customer's control of customer own new material, for instance, for security reasons. It is important to note that there is no change to the contractor's existing intellectual property or default contractor ownership of new material. There is a new definition of open source software in the dictionary, which aligns with the open source initiative definition. There is now greater transparency regarding open source software, given that the customer's prior written consent is required to develop, enhance any deliverable using open source software or insert open source software into any deliverable. Also, approved open source software must not result in an obligation to disclose, license or make available any part of the customer's environment, data or confidential information to any third party. An approved open source software must not diminish the contractor's obligations. Now, these changes were made because there was a need for greater oversight to ensure contractual obligations so that customer environment, data, and confidentiality are not compromised. In relation to system requirements and warranty, if the general order form states products and services comprise a system, there are new contractual requirements concerning delivery of system, including development of specifications, design, development, build and acceptance testing. 
There is a new warranty that a system will comply with the contract specifications and customer contract and be compatible and integrate properly with other system components and designated environment. Now these changes were made because the current warranties and their modules for individual system components were insufficient. Additionally, when customers acquired a system of components covered by different procurity modules, individual warranties under those modules were found to be insufficient with the contractor required to add additional warranties for the system. Now, with regards to liability, there are no major changes. In relation to systems, there is a new cap on liability for a system of two times the contract value for the non-recurring service or product comprising the system. The customer contract has been revised, so the phrase loss, damage or expense is used consistently throughout. There are no changes to consequential loss. Procure IT version 3.2 retains the general position that neither party is liable for the other's consequential loss. In addition, the contractor is now required to indemnify the customer for intellectual property claims caused by contractor approved or contract specification combination operation or use of deliverables with other products, equipment, business methods, software or data, and any contractor approved modification of a deliverable by any other person. Now, this change addresses the anomaly that resulted in the contractor not having an indemnity for intellectual property claims, which were caused by the contractor approved uses or uses in accordance with the contract specification. In regards to audit, uh, there are now new requirements to ensure better oversight of contract compliance. The customer may now conduct an audit to enable the customer to confirm the contractor's compliance no more than once in any calendar year. The customer needs to give the contractor at least five business days prior written notice. There is also a clear requirement to remedy any breach or breaches shown by the audit. In addition, there is now flexibility to agree on alternative audit mechanisms in the general order form. Now, why these changes? These changes give customers greater scrutiny of compliance by contractors in line with procurement policy requirements. With regards to escrow, they there are now new escrow provisions, which include the ability to agree on alternative escrow arrangements. And this change was made to give the customer and the contractor more flexibility. In terms of termination for convenience, Procure IT version 3.2 now clarifies that the contractor will either be paid an amount specified on the order form, or if no amount is specified in the order form, any losses, damages, or expenses which are reasonably and properly incurred by the contractor as a direct result of the termination of the contract. Now, why these changes? Previous, previously, uh, Procure IT was worded in a way which could have been interpreted as entitling the contractor to double deep on payments. There are now new provisions to address legislative requirements 
under the Government Information Public Access Act 2009, that is the GIPA Act, New South Wales. These are clauses 26.12 to 26.15 of the customer contract and apply where the customer is subject to the GIPA Act. These clauses adopt a similar approach to the Information and Privacy Commission template contract wording in relation to Section 1 to 1 of the GIPA Act. Now, what if the customer is not subject to GIPA? Then the parties can note that the relevant clauses are not applicable in the general order form. Now, we have included some frequently asked questions in relation to Procure IT version 3.2. One of the frequently asked questions is what about the head agreement? Well, like, like Procure IT version 3.1, there is a head agreement in Procure IT version 3.2. Where the customer is procuring ICT under the ICT services scheme, a Procure IT customer contract will be agreed with the supplier and there will normally be no need for a head agreement. The head agreement is still used by New South Wales government. For instance, in whole of government panel arrangements or multi-agency arrangements where a contract authority agrees the terms for supply by the supplier to individual customers who each place a customer contract with the supplier. There is no change to the definition of contract authority from version 3.1. Contract authority is therefore defined as the head of a government agency which may procure ICT for that agency or other government agencies. Another frequently asked question is whether there are any changes to who can purchase. Now, eligible customers under Procure IT are any government agency or eligible non-government body, so there are no major changes here, only minor revisions. In terms of what is a government agency, in accordance to the Public Works and Procurement Act 1912 definition, this includes a government sector agency under the GSE Act, a New South Wales government agency, under the Interpretations Act, any other public authority constituted by or under an act of New South Wales or that exercises public functions, and any state-owned corporation prescribed by the Public Works and Procurement Regulation in New South Wales. With regards to eligible non-government body, these are public bodies eligible to buy under a specific head agreement, including list of bodies identified in the Public Works and Procurement Regulation Clause 6, that is, private hospitals, local councils or other local authority, charity or other community, non-profit organization, private school or college, university, public authority of the Commonwealth, state or territory, or any other jurisdiction, or any contractor to a public authority. The term agency has a broader meaning than government agency, as it includes state, territory, and commonwealth agencies. With the change from version 3.1 to version 3.2, another frequently asked question is whether suppliers need to reapply. From the 1st of September 2017, Procure IT version 3.2 applies to all new ICT procurement valued over $150,000 high-risk procurement. Current register ICT services scheme suppliers do not need to reapply. The current register and advanced register supplier list continues. Current ICT procurement contracts are unaffected. These will remain as Procure IT version 3.1 contracts until expiry.
unless the supplier and customer agree to vary, and we will discuss this a little bit later. Um, what about variations to procure IT version 3.2? We will discuss this in the next slide. The New South Wales Procurement Board Direction 2012-5 has been revised and replaced by the new Procurement Board Direction 2017-2. The Procurement Board Direction 2017-2 continues to require New South Wales government agencies to use the Procure IT framework when procuring ICT. So there is no change on this obligation. In relation to variations to Procure IT terms and conditions, the Procurement Board Direction 2017-2 requires that the Procure IT framework standard terms and conditions not be varied without the Department of Finance, Services and Innovation approval except in the cases of beneficial variations. Government agencies are not required to obtain approval by the Department of Finance, Services and Innovation for procure IT variations, which clearly improve the customer's contractual position. For instance, amendments improving or adding to the customer's legal rights. Government agencies are required to provide prior notification of beneficial variations to the legal team in the Department of Finance, Services and Innovation. And they need to support that by legal advice. Now, why these changes? This is to align with decentralization of procurement. And it avoids duplication of government legal resources. Now, notification to the Department of Finance, Services and Innovation legal team is required so a central register can be kept of variations to improve procurity. Now we will talk about some transitional arrangements. Now, what happens with contracts that have been already in place prior to the 1st of September 2017? Do they automatically become Procure IT version 3.2 contracts? No. All current contracts are unaffected and will continue as Procure IT version 3.2 contracts or an earlier Procure IT version if executed prior to Procure IT version 3.2, 3.1, until expiry, unless both customer and contractor agree to vary the contract to include Procure IT version 3.2 terms and conditions. Now, what if the customer extends a Procure IT version 3.1? The contract continues as a Procure IT version 3.1 contract if the customer exercises its right or option to extend, that is renew, the term of a pre-1st of September 2017 contract in accordance with its terms. That is, of course, unless the customer and the contractor vary the contract. What if there are no options remaining and the customer wants to extend the term? Now, from the 1st of September 2017, any variation should also include incorporation of Procure IT version 3.2. Approval by the Department of Finance, Services and Innovation is required to vary a Procure IT version 3.1 or earlier Procure IT version contract to extend its terms rather than moving to a Procure IT version 3.2 contract where there are no remaining options to extend. What if the customer and the contractor want to agree to a new contract that is due to expire? Procure IT version 3.2 should be used and appropriate procurement processes follow in these circumstances. Now, what about pre-1st of September RFT processes? 
If the RFD process commenced before the 1st of September 2017, with likely commencement dates before the 1st of September, Procure IT version 3.1 may be used. However, New South Wales government agencies are strongly encouraged to include Procure IT version 3.2 terms where possible. Now, the ICT and Digital Government Division are very, very soon kicking off an ICT procurement transformation program of work. This program is a key priority for our Government Chief Information and Digital Officer and will be used to drive significant change in the ICT procurement process. This program is, about, is all about making it easier to do business with New South Wales Government and making it easier for agencies to get on with their digital agendas. As we start this program of work, we are going to be working closely with both industry and our agency stakeholders to ensure we have a procurement process that works for both agencies and suppliers alike. If you would like to be a part of this program, please let us know by providing some feedback at the end of this webinar. The Procure IT review is a collaborative process. We welcome constructive feedback on Procure IT version 3.2 to inform ongoing improvement. If you have any comments or suggestions for improvement, please, please provide this to New South Wales by at finance.newsouthwales.gov.au. Thank you.